Hi, my name is Megan Podlaski. I'm a graduate student at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute where I work on the modeling of the Cheetah Hybrid Propulsion Aircraft Power System using the Medellica programming language. For this presentation, I'll give an introduction of the Cheetah aircraft and the project itself, an overview of the proposed electrical architecture and the multi-domain modeling approach. I'll explain the power system and controls and the different models we use in the power system, as well as show some preliminary results. The Cheetah aircraft is a project to explore future technologies in electrified aircraft. It's a hybrid electric aircraft powered by batteries and hydrogen fuel cells. Another interesting fact about the aircraft is that the components are designed to be cryogenically cooled by liquid hydrogen. On the right, we have an overview of how the different domains would be placed inside of the aircraft. We would have to model the electrical components, liquid hydrogen, thermal components and domains, the mechanical domain and the aerodynamics, as well as the control systems set by the energy management system, thermal management system, and battery management system. This presentation will mostly focus on the modeling of the electrical system. These models are created using Dimola and the Medellica programming language. Here, we have the proposed electrical system architecture. It's a hybrid centralized and distributed electrical architecture. It consists of eight fuel cells split into two generation buses. These generation buses and fuel cells will be put in the body of the aircraft and will be connected via a tie line to provide added reliability to balance power between the two, all of the fuel cell generation. Power will then be sent to each of the wings via a high temperature superconducting cable. On each of the wings, we'll have four motors, variable speed drives and inverters, as well as a battery connected directly to that distribution bus. So the advantages of this specific architecture is the added reliability of having the batteries connected to the motor bus if anything happens to the fuel cell or HGS line, as well as a more balanced aircraft weight with the batteries located in the wings. An interesting challenge with this aircraft is that we will need to cryogenically cool the bus bars. The motors will pull a lot of current and we're only using one HTS line to provide power to each of the wings. So we can't use the standard copper bus bar. It'll draw a lot of heat with all of that current. So we need to cryogenically cool the bus bars to stay stable. The purpose of creating all of these multi-domain models is to help develop the energy management systems. These multi-domain models will allow us to couple electrical models, aerodynamics, mechanical models, and the thermal response together. The general control hierarchy is shown on the right, where we're going to observe the set points derived from the flight trajectory in the pilot and use basic measurements of voltage and current from the cable and power converters and battery and the battery state of charge to determine power allocation. Then from there, we'll calculate the power dispatch and set points for the fuel cell battery and converters. Here is the power system model. I took one branch of the power system that I had showed before, with, so we're only gonna focus on one fuel cell and one motor. This is what it looks like in Dimola using the Medellica programming language. In block A, we have a fuel cell. In block B, we have the battery. In block C, we have the electrified powertrain with subcomponents of a controller modulation method for the inverter control, the inverter, and the machine. In block D, we have the transmission line. In block E, we have the fan. Something to note about Medellica is that we have all of those different colored connections between components. These represent the different domains. So the dark blue line connecting the battery and the uh, HDS line, for example, is the electrical domain. It connects, communicates the voltage and current between the components. The red line going into the HDS line is the thermal domain that looks at the temperature and heat flow into the component. We also have the rotational mechanical domain represented at the end of the machine for the rotor spinning the fan, as well as the light green and orange lines in the fuel cell representing the uh, heat, the flow of the coolant and water into the fuel cell. 
So in this hybrid system, the fuel cell will supply most of the power requirements. The batteries will supplement extra power during takeoff and taxiing, but for the most time, we're gonna use the fuel cell. We considered two different technologies to use our fuel cell for, for this project. We looked at the solid oxide fuel cell and the proton exchange membrane fuel cells. We ended up picking the PEM fuel cell technology for the lower operating temperature, the weight, and the efficiency. In the future, we're going to model this fuel cell in more detail, specifically with this sub-block here of pre-processing the cool stack electrical connection and the metal catalytic burner modeling the um, consumption of LH2 and generation of water. The battery is utilized in the hybrid system for reliability and satisfying extra power requirements. Like I said before, we're only going to we're going to use the battery during takeoff and landing and taxiing, and it'll be placed in the wings for more balanced weight and to provide emergency power in case of a loss of fuel cell or a failure in the HTS line. Here is what the battery system looks like in Dimola right now. We have a bi-directional DC to DC converter and the battery management system to control when the battery is charging and discharging, as well as a connection to the rest of the grid, which is monitored. The battery management system monitors the voltage at that point. Uh, the battery pack is shown inside of the green box and is connected to that housing heat port. That housing heat port models the cold plates to cool the system. The battery is a scaled pack of cylindrical cells that consists of a thermal model, an open circuit voltage model, and an aging model. So we can model the battery in detail. The battery management system that I showed before is shown in more detail here. The battery management system uses a table-based model with values from a scientific data format to define battery charge state, current, and power. The tables come from real world battery systems. So we're using that as a baseline right now and it'll be updated in the future to reflect the cheetah parameters. The battery management system uses observers um, of the voltage, temperature, and current to control the power output. Next, we are going to look at the electrified powertrain. We used the Dassault Systems Electrified Powertrain Library, which consists of multiple parts. We are going to look at the controller modulation method for the inverter, the inverter, and an asynchronous injection machine. Another benefit here to using Medelica, which is shown in this blown up picture of the components is that we can use replaceable customized models. So right now we're just using a baseline model, but as we develop the novel components of the Cheetah system more, specifically in the cryogenically cooled machine, we can replace the, the machine model that we have now easily with a customized model with those customized cryogenic um, equations. So here we have our controller modulation method. The time constants and limits for the speed controller are determined on the machine dynamic parameters from the direct quadrature model. We're going to, we control the machine based on a field weakening control, which sets the value of the magnetizing current based on the machine's inductances and linkage flux. We estimate the rotor flux using the magnetizing current, and then we control the current using the flux producing current and the current from the speed control block to determine if the speed is operating at the maximum voltage and keep it safe. Um, another thing to note about the modulation method is we are not including it in this specific EPTL model. Um, so the voltages sent to the inverter are just normalized instead of using a modulation method. Um, so the inverter here is an average inverter. Uh, we use the average inverter to simulate the system instead of a switched inverter because using Medelica the, and a transistor, every single time the transistor changes state in Medelica, the model will need to be evaluated. In a system like this, the transistors will be changing at a rate in the hundreds of kilohertz frequency range, so the model will need to be simulated at that time scale. So 
that ends up change, slowing down the simulation speed significantly, and the average inverter model is an adequate replacement for the time being. So the inverter produces the three phase voltages shown in the matrix below, and it is directly connected to the asynchronous machine. In the future, the inverter will also be cooled by a lumped mass model. Here is the asynchronous induction machine that we are using. In the future, we will replace this with a synchronous machine and the novel components of the cryogenically cooled architecture. Um, it uses an open source machine model in the Medelica standard library, which is maintained by the Medelica Association. The operating temperature and effect of the temperature on the performance will be obtained directly from the coupled electrical thermal analysis components. And so the way this works is it takes in the three phase voltage at those plug SN and plug SP ports and uses the space phaser component to translate that three phase um, sinusoidal signal to a phaser signal to be directly connected to the air gap. The air gap then translates the phaser signal into a mechanical rotational um, signal that will turn the rotor. This then makes a nice multi-domain model linking the electrical system to the mechanical system. The multi-domain transmission line is the high temperature superconducting cable. It uses a coaxial cable electrical model and the Steckley cryostability equations. Only the hydrogen liquid cool case is considered here. So in this case, the pipeline model is considered for the electrical system and port A is the port to the thermal model. It'll be, since we're looking at a liquid cooled line, we have a constant temperature being um, observed at that port A and we are only looking at the heat flow out. On the right, we also have the equations that we use to model the HTS line. We calculate a carrying current for this line based on the temperature and critical temperature of the line. And then we update the temperature of the line according to that critical temperature, resistivity of the cable, and the physical parameters of the cable. Um, we use that change in temperature to update the heat flow the heat transfer coefficient. And then we calculate the heat flow based off of that and the change in temperature. Finally, we have the fan. The motors in the power system drive a fan load, which acts as a propulsion system of the aircraft for the time being. Only the simplest place models for fan load are available for analysis in the power system model. So the entire model is in the mechanical rotational domain. It consists of an inertia and a disc to represent the rotational dynamics and weight of the fan. Another thing to note about Medelica is that we can animate these components. So for the fan, we connect the gear constant, which is that disc, to a pipe with scalar field. So while we are turning the fan, we also get a changing scalar field to animate the fan turning. So I combine this whole system and I'm only looking at one branch to look at a mission profile. Um, I'll use a fuel cell as a constant voltage source and I'll fly the aircraft over an hour long mission with the main focus on analysis for the HTS cable temperature, power flow, and fan speed. Here is what the results look like for this hour long mission profile. Constant 1000 volts is supplied to the powertrain so we don't need to dis uh, patch the battery. The aircraft takes off for a flight of seven and a half minutes, flies at a steady state for 45 minutes, and lands for a period of seven and a half minutes. Um, some notable things to consider here is that the HTS cable remains at a stable temperature. For high HTS cables, the goal is to keep the change in temperature under 2 Kelvin because anything higher than that will cause uncontrolling heating of the line and the line will melt. The current is kept at a relatively low level for this simulation which keeps the temperature low and the fan speed gets up to the desired speed after seven and a half minutes. I also tested the battery management system since it wasn't triggered in the simulation before. 
I've used a sinusoidal signal voltage to model the fuel cell to trigger the battery to turn it on to discharge. Based off of the battery management system algorithm, the battery is dispatched when the fuel cell voltage drops below 950 volts, which is shown in the graph on the right. The battery discharges at a rate of 30 amps, but this will be scaled up to match the required parameters for the system in the future. The battery steps down from initial state of charge from 0.6 to 0.4 over the simulated period, and this will help us be able to scale the capacity of the battery um, and increase it when the finalized parameters of the Cheetah system are applied. So in conclusion, we have a couple things that we've learned from the modeling so far, um, specifically with the Cheetah propulsion concept. So the electrical systems and are studied and we defined a candidate. The main challenge of this was the use of the high temperature superconducting cable. It's not common in aircraft architectures and it requires high cryogenic cooling and novel components. The initial power system model with multi-domain interfaces has been developed using the Medelica language. It brings all of the electrical power components of the system model together for early system integration studies to, 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 to guide subsystem development. It enables integration of the thermal management and cooling system, and it allows for design driven by emission profiles. Novel power system components are also proposed and outlined specifically with the high temperature superconducting cable and bus bars. A new HTS cable has been defined and implemented for the system study. So in the future, we plan to implement other power system components, model the components thermal behavior, the cooling system, etc. And early integrated system models are really helpful at early stages of development of new propulsion concepts. We are completely going into a new area, so it allows us to define and identify domain boundaries and limitations and delineation of responsibilities early on in system development. It allows us to identify original concept gaps and technology needs and aid in communication between experts of different disciplines, and it enables early discussion of concept principles which is really exciting for the development of the aircraft in the future. Thank you for listening and for your attention.